It's no secret that I've been skeptical of dietary supplements, which make the claim that by raising NAD levels, they can prolong the human lifespan and health span. In the next few minutes, I want to show you some evidence for why I feel this way. Let's go. Now, previously, I've shown you videos on natural ways to raise your NAD levels, and I've even done a review of a popular product called NMN, which I'll link to both these videos in the description so you can see them yourself. Now, I want to talk about a very popular NAD booster supplement called nicotinamide riboside. This is actually the most popular type of product out there, and this study came out in 2019 titled Nicotinamide Riboside Does Not Alter Mitochondrial Respiration Content or Morphology in skeletal muscle from obese and insulin resistant men. What do we got here? Well, we've got 40 guys. They've basically got pre-diabetes and they break them up two groups. Uh, they Half of them get a placebo for three months. Half of them get 2,000 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside. Again, they're followed for, for three months. And at the end of the study, the researchers report, our data do not support the hypothesis that dietary nicotinamide riboside supplements have any significant impact on skeletal muscle mitochondria in obese insulin resistant men. Here's basically their results. They claim this is the first study of its type ever conducted, and they note that three months of supplementation actually led to a decrease in NAMPT levels. NAMPT is an enzyme that you need to make NAD levels. You'd think that it would go up, but it actually went down by 14% in this particular study. Also equally interesting is that three months of supplementation had no impact on NAD levels in this investigation. The levels did not go up and they did not go down either. Again, nicotinamide riboside is touted to boost NAD levels. It didn't raise them in this, in this investigation, but it also didn't lower them either. And I thought that was interesting because this key enzyme actually went down uh, by 14%. Now, the mitochondria is a uh, something that you often hear uh, said when, when you people take nicotinamide riboside. It's supposed to improve the health of the mitochondria and it's supposed to improve the number of the mitochondria as well, as they sometimes say, improve mitochondrial biogenesis, make more mitochondria. Well, in this investigation, it didn't do either. A after three months of supplementation, these individuals did not have any more mitochondria in their muscles, and the, the mitochondria that they had didn't work any any better than before they took the supplement. And you may be wondering what, ver what actual supplement they were taking in this investigation. It was actually called Niagen or True Niagen. What else we got? Well, prior to this, there was another investigation came out on insulin sensitivity, and it's titled a randomized placebo-controlled trial of nicotinamide riboside in obese men, safety, insulin sensitivity, and lipid mobilizing effects. Before we go any further, I want you to realize that this is essentially the same study as I just showed you before. It's the same group of 40 guys. They're overweight. They're pre-diabetic. They follow them for 12 weeks, and, and they either get a placebo or 2,000 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside, niagen, uh, per day, and they find that this 2,000 milligrams has no effect on insulin sensitivity or glucose metabolism in these individuals. Insulin sensitivity is uh, a reference to how well the insulin works. You want to have very sensitive insulin because the more sensitive it is, the better it works, the better it lowers blood sugar levels. Well, in this investigation, it didn't appear to help the insulin work better, and it didn't lower blood sugar. Now, one key thing I want to throw out to you that I, I, I think many people People may miss in this is both of these studies involve 2,000 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside. That is more than most people are taking. Most people are probably not taking that much. Could the high dose of nicotinamide riboside, could that have played a role in these not so great uh, uh, observations in these two studies? It's possible. I can't say either way. It's just that that's a pretty high dose and it jumped out to me. I leave it to your discretion. Overall, guys, I, I personally think that we need more research on all of these NAD booster supplements. This is some of the research that I would like to see. For instance, telomeres. Telomeres are the ends of our chromosomes. And as we get older, telomeres tend to shorten. And that's sometimes taken as a sign of aging. Well, if this is an anti-aging dietary supplement, does it, it basically lengthen those telomeres? I want to see that study done.
Number two, do these NAD booster supplements raise NAD levels inside our cells? The research I've seen appears to show that NAD, NAD levels are raised in the blood, in the, in the blood of our body, but does that in turn increase the NAD levels in the cells? It may, it may not. I, I don't know. I would just like to see more cellular NAD level research. And then lastly, and this is the, I think the most important thing, uh, does the, do these NAD booster supplements reduce the risk of disease and or lengthen the human lifespan? The lifespan is going to be hard to figure out because we live so darn long, thank goodness, but does it reduce the risk of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, dementia, et cetera? I, I don't know either way because I haven't seen that type of data yet. Hopefully those type of studies are in the pipeline, but regardless, until I see research like this, I'm going to continue to be skeptical on NAD booster supplements. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I will answer them to the best of my abilities myself. Don't forget to su subscribe and like my videos. Until next time, gang, I'm Joe Cannon. Go out and make a difference.